All right, guys, so this will be your notes for the trig identities. So feel free to pause, rewind, fast forward, do whatever you need to do so you can copy the notes. So on this first page, you see that we can break down this whole topic of identities and what a trig identity is. This is something familiar from algebra, but just in case you forgot, an identity is just an equation that both sides are equal for any variable. And obviously a trig identity would have trig in it. So here's your first little set of identities. These should be familiar. So you have your reciprocal identities and your quotient identities. So take a second, pause the slides, and copy those down into your notes. So let's use these identities for these examples. So the first one's giving you a cosecant value and they're asking you to find a sine value. So your instinct should be to try to find the identity that somehow relates cosecant and sine. So our first trig identity that we're gonna be using will be this first one up here, where you have sine of theta equals one over cosecant of theta. So when you get that written out, <clears throat> So you have your cosecant of theta equals seven over four. So you can use your trig identity. So sine of theta equals one over the cosecant of theta. Replace that cosecant of theta with seven over four. And you can use keep change flip. So you have one times four over seven. So now we know that the sine of theta is going to be four over seven. So that's pretty much it. You can pause it if you need to, or we're gonna move on to the next example. So in the next one, you can see that now we have cotangent and sine. So again, you're gonna to need to find the identity that relates cotangent and sine. And for us, that one's gonna be right down here. So you have your cotangent is cosine over sine. So when we're getting this set up, you can rewrite it. You can have your cotangent of x equals cosine of x over sine of x. Then we can replace it with the values that we have. So we know that the cotangent of x is two over five root five. We don't know what the cosine of x is. And we know that the sine of x is root five over three. Okay, so from here we need to, since we're already being divided by root 5 over 3, we need to multiply by root 5 over 3. Multiply the left-hand side by root 5 over 3. On our right-hand side, they'll cancel, and you're left with just cosine of x. On the left-hand side, the root 5s will cancel, so you're going to be left with 2 over 15. So that's what they're asking us for, so that's your final answer. If you can, you would want to simplify it but 2 and 15 do not have anything in common. Okay, next up we have our Pythagorean identities. So take a second, pause the screen, and copy these down. And then we're going to work on the example. Okay, so our example is involving tangent and sine and cosine. So that's the one where you're gonna to need to first figure out which identity has tangent in it. And for us, it is just this center one here. So we're gonna get started with that one. So if they're telling us that tangent of theta equals negative eight, we can write our identity. So we have tangent squared of theta plus one equals secant squared theta. You can rewrite that tangent squared theta as tangent of theta squared. So that's a property you can't forget about. And then from there, we know that the tangent of theta is negative eight. So we have negative eight squared plus one equals secant squared theta. So we know that this will be 64 plus one equals secant squared theta. And so that means that 65 is secant squared. So now we need to somehow relate the secant squared to either cosine or sine. So we know that secant squared is a reciprocal of cosine. So if you have, um, well secant is, so you have secant is one over cosine. So what we can do first is get rid of that square root. So we have the square root of 65 and that's gonna be plus or minus the square root of 65. 
equals secant of theta. We're going to use that reciprocal identity, so we know plus or minus the square root of 65 equals 1 over the cosine of theta. And then you can either view this as like cross-multiplying or whatever you need to do. This is really over 1, so you know that.